Hey y'all, I'm working in Reactor today and I wanna make an envelope follower. What is an envelope follower? Well, it takes an input signal, an audio signal, and then it tries to find out what the envelope, the amplitude envelope of that signal is. And then we can take that envelope and apply it to other sounds. Why might we want one of these? Well, one thing I use these for a lot is if I have a kick drum and I wanna put in a low sine wave underneath that kick drum, I put an envelope follower on the kick drum sound, and then I use the envelope of that to control the amplitude of a sine wave. There are lots of other applications for this in interactive music though. It's set up something where when a singer sings, a sawtooth wave's amplitude will come in and follow that. Now, it's not just amplitude that we can control with this envelope. Just like when we made an envelope filter, this envelope can control a filter cutoff. Let's start though by putting together something simple and then we can build in some new sophistication. All right, so this is a new ensemble. I've prepped a uh, drum beat in this for today. Let's run this input to the outputs and hit play. I'm only gonna be using one input today for mono. Complete this. And let's bring in a scope so we can look at this. Input signal. Okay, so far so good. I'm gonna delete that going to the outputs because that's not actually what we want. What we'll start with, let's go built-in module, signal path, amp mixer. And so run that into there. Original. All right, so now I don't have to keep deleting wires, but we can also turn down the original here. What we wanna do though, instead of listening to this directly, is we wanna take the envelope information from this, the amplitude information from this, and then use it to control the amplitude of something else. Let's do that in a macro. And I'm gonna just call this macro follower, just because envelope follower is too long. Go inside, make an input, make an output. And then we need to run that original signal into the amplitude follower. Let's grab this scope, command C, throw it inside, command V, and this is gonna be our envelope out. And once again, this is all optional. This is just so we can visualize it. Now, this envelope follower is gonna be a two-step process based off of uh, what I saw in an instruction manual for a dope for envelope follower. And so step one here is rectification, right? So this is taking the absolute value of the signal. So again, just so we can see that, I'll run that to the here. So that's what that looks like, right? So you can see this is the original signal. This is the, well, it's not the envelope out yet. I've just, oh, I just tried to switch those and failed. Let's flip those around just so inputs on this side and, and the output of the envelopes there. So it takes this and again, not the envelope out yet, but it's inverted the signal. Uh, if you want to hear what that sounds like, I think. That's pretty neat. Again, here's the original. So doing a rectification can be a great effect to keep that in your back pocket, but that's not what we're doing today. What we want to do is we want to get this envelope. And so this is too fast to be the envelope. It's changing too quickly. And so what we need to do to slow the changes down is we use a filter. I'm just going to put in one pole filter. You can try different ones if you want and then run this in here. And I'm going to delete this wire, this into there. And so what this filter does is it smooths things out. Remember, low pass filters take out high frequency, allowing low ones to pass. But we need to set something here. So according to that dope for manual, they have theirs set as a low pass filter at create constant 50 Hertz. So by the way, notice here that I've used this log to convert a frequency into a pitch. Clean myself up a little bit here. Rectification, filtering, that's all we're doing. 
And so now we can see that this is the output. Uh, it's a little bit bumpy, but you can see how it's way smoothed out. And we can see how we might use this as an envelope. So let's do it. Just for the sake of being able to hear it, let's start with a sawtooth wave. So I'm going to use it to control the amplitude envelope. This needs a pitch. Let's just make a constant. That's fine. The default is 60. And then let's run this into the mixer. Okay, here's the original. Envelope signal. Let's bring it down a little bit. Now there's a lot going on in that sawtooth. Again, we could make it into just very quickly a sine wave just to see what that's like. Okay, so now. Right, you can hear how that, that sine wave's going. Again, easier to hear the saw. If you aren't wearing headphones or in good speakers, you might not hear that at all, because it's, it's a low sine wave at, uh, at note number 36. Okay, there's still a little bit of bumpiness in here, and that's because in the original signal, there's all these kick drum sounds. We can actually see those low frequencies in there. And so maybe our 50 hertz is not quite sufficient there. So what we can do instead is we can now change this with a control for frequency. And so let's go in here uh, and check out the range. Let's make the maximum of this 50. Uh, we'll make the minimum. Uh, that's probably not very good. Let's make it 20 hertz and let's see how this goes. Okay, so 50 is what we were at before. Let's see where it gets sort of smooth, but still use. Oh, I've made the step size 30. That's not going to help me. Let's make our step size one. Mm, didn't mean to click off that. I'm sorry. See how it's getting smoother there? I might want to go even further down than 20. Let's go down to 10. That's very smooth. Five. Right, a little bit of that wiggliness coming in. This is going to depend on your source material. So, you know, we could sort of call this, you know, sensitivity or smoothness rather than frequency. But the other thing that I want to do here is I want to give the option to increase the gain. So let's just do that in a very simple way with a multiply. Input goes in there, create control, and then run that in. So now this is the input signal. So we can just call this in gain. And then let's set this to have a maximum of two. And so now we were able to increase the gain of the input. So now, again, the signal comes in, gets multiplied by two or whatever I set this knob to, and then it goes through the rectification and the filter. Wigglier. Okay, so this is a pretty good envelope filter. Let me say that again. This is a pretty good envelope follower. I knew I was going to do that at least once, uh, but there we are. Okay, what happens is signal comes in. We have it going to the original if you want to hear the original, but it also goes into this follower. It gets adjusted by the gain. We can increase the gain. Uh, in gain seems kind of silly. Let's just call it gain.
it gets rectified, so it's all positive, the bottom half of it gets flipped over, and then it gets filtered to smooth it out, and then we get this resulting uh, smooth that one. And again, we can control that smoothness. Up until now, I've been using it to control amplitude, but let's perhaps think about making something a little bit more interesting. What if I just have a drone going on here? Sorry, that's much louder. So now I have my sawtooth as a drone, and let's use this envelope follower to affect a filter. Now, the clever of you among yourselves know that this is going to cause me a big problem if I just run my envelope follower into the P here. Oh, it won't even let me. <laughs> uh, let's do an A to E. Audio to event, right? Think. All right, but it's still going to give me a big problem if I just run it into the, the P here. Let's just create a... Uh, constant for our resonance. And I'll clean up this mess in just a second. So now we got a bit of resonance on that filter. Why is this causing a problem? Think for two seconds, one Mississippi, two Mississippi. It's because this envelope filter is only giving us zero to one, right? And then we've made the cutoff frequency go from zero to one. And so what we're going to want to do is our usual scale and offset. If you've seen my video on the envelope filter, then we're used to this. So we need a multiply and then we need an add. By the way, there is a module that does multiply and add together, which is very useful. I guess it's just my habit as a teacher to break these out into two different steps. Let's say the lowest we ever want this to be is 36. And let's say now we multiply it by I'm starting with 80. Okay, I can hear that a little bit. I want to change my numbers there. So now what's happening is it goes from 0 to 1 coming out of here. 0 times 80 is 0, plus 36. 36 is the lowest. 1 times 80 plus 36 would be, what, 120? Uh, nope, 116. So let's make that a bit higher. Let's make this from 48. I could also... There we go. Let's take the LP2, less steep filter. I like that sound. Let's make this 100 and see what happens. Turn up my resonance. Again, I should have an opposite. One is too much. One is silly. We're getting to something that's nice. There we go. Got more of those wiggles if we turn it up higher. Okay. That's pretty excellent. Does this make sense? So we're extracting a feature from this input audio. We're taking the amplitude and we're making it into a control signal. In this case, we're making that control signal uh, affect the filter. You know, the easier example was the first one where we just had it affect the amplitude. But this one sounds pretty amazing. All right, I've already gone way longer than I expected on this video. Mess around with it. Use this control signal to control different characteristics of sound. You could do panning, you could sweep pitch, whatever you want to do. Have some fun. Let me know what you come up with. Bye.